Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop that... Oopsie doodle. Today, a treat especial for the LX chickens in the crowd. A wire cable stripa. Nothing worse. What's your ankle deep in minor piss fighting a 250 or 500 MCM cable? Ah! And you gotta strip it with your bare knife. Safety knife, of course. I don't know uh, what the wife is giving the root vegetables, but there seems to be a dearth of tulips around. I ought not be changing the oil, I guess, in the back garden. I start el temporizador. Fig dich, diewalt. In keeping with the German theme, we're using Bernhardt's, no, Bernhardt's Heine's invention from the 1800s. Bone saw. Ugh. Use the Lee Trevino feather touch. This is a precision instrument compared to the Husqvarna. Quite a bit more Viking in its countenance. This is slightly more Teutonic. The poor bastard what invented these. He was born in the 1800s, died in 1846. 46 years old, died of tuberculosis, did all kinds of work on bones and so forth. Imagine that, 46 years old, you die of tuberculosis. Now we're running around scared shitless. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, I could get into a rant here, but, you know, little ears and so forth. Won't be needing that. That uh, has got the distinct countenance of an impact driver with the proboscis. I might have thrown out those instructions prematurely. Oh, I get you. I get you. Holy fuck. <laughs> Apologies. I shouldn't be shocked and aghast at this, how ridiculously absurd a standalone tool for stripping wires is. I thought it'd be some sort of whiz bangery something interesting. All it is is a, it's just a slow speed driver. You put the bushings in the end, and it just skives the insulation off of the conductor. That's, that's, that's it. That's the extent of it. You set the depths with this. So, what you could do, instead of buying a, oh god, $250 doll hair, Kanaki stand, Kopec mind, tool, is have some sockets with got a oh for fuck's sakes beyond the utter absurdity and sting of wasting <laughs> easily earned dollar dues of your patron money focus you fuck we'll give lieutenant commander fuckerberg a good shot of my epidural ridges epidermis ridge epidural no ow my back look at this a pre-extruded O-ring. That'd be used just for, I don't know, preload. Well, there is a wave spring in there, so I don't know what the fuck that's for. Appears to be a focus U. Yeah, appears to be a Viton O-ring in there. Pre-extruded for her pleasure. Mangled right up. Whoever put that together didn't give two fucks. We got a little pinny thing for holding in the dies. And here's another mistake I made. I didn't realize this come without dies. I, I don't know, I thought maybe the tool would just work <laughs> out of the box. Apparently not. You gotta buy the consumables too. 
We've got a dedicated switch for the light. No SOS blink though, that's that's too bad. Yeah, it's always fun when you gotta cycle through the SOS blink and oh god. Never ends. Interesting on the control side, maybe no brownout detect, but there is some energy kept in the capacitors on that driver board. Watch this. Speaking of strippers, pro tip, never look them in the eyes. Freaks them out. Or maybe it's the slavering and the incessant ringing of hands. <laughs> what time do you get off? Why, why do old hunters go to the strip club? Because they always know where to find a nice rack. What's a stripper do with her asshole before her shift? Drops them off at band practice. <laughs> Those beautifully rendered, terrible joke, plata papa, remind me of a proper joke, a decent joke. I got told by a young fella. He had a degree in outdoor recreation. Went to Universitad four years to learn how to recreate out the doors. Interesting. I don't know if that was uh, from the University of Neverland, but very likely something close. I asked him one day, with your degree, I didn't disparage him, of course, but with your degree in outdoor recreation, why are you working under the ground in the depths of despair, the darkness, here with me? To wit, he replied, what's the difference between a ski guide and a large pizza? A large pizza can feed a family. Oh, come on! Fucking piece of chit. Must be a reverse threat. This is the weirdest fucking impact driver I've ever impacted. <laughs> I already had a bit of a hot supper, that one. There's a popular girl at the high school dance. Fancy it up a little bit with an exploded view on the healing bench. You know, I'll, I'll just sew and I'll, you know, you know, just kind of class it up a bit. This is interesting. Haven't seen this before. The clamshell half molded is polycarbonate and PBT with a SEBS or TBS overmolding. That's that butylene. And the PBT is poly. Butylene to the fab of that benate. Cav 2, I think it's just the second cavity, maybe marking which side of the mold this came out of or which cavity. Or, but we haven't seen that, and there's no glass fiber reinforcing. So for impact resistance, they've had the polycarbonate, which is extremely strong and extremely expensive. But they might be offsetting that because of the reduced wear on the mold itself from not having any glass fiber in there and we'll just confirm that by ear confirm that by ear yeah no scritchy no scritchy at all which you would normally be able to hear if it was full of glass fiber 
that's just straight plastic. So what you can see here is a needle bearing through shaft, and probably another bearing on here, a little seal, Bob Giorgianti. The interesting thing, however, is that all of the mechanism in here looks like it's from a drill. Why else would there be the hammer clutch mechanism on that outside uh, of the ring gear? Well, it's a ring gear for the planetary gear set. But it doesn't do anything in this tool, but it's there nonetheless. So they're saving billet materials parts. They're not designing a new part just for this, all this uh, reduction mechanism. Three planetary gear reductions, or no, two. Well, it looks like three. And that's how you get the, the two speeds. You either lock one ring gear or uh, let it go free and it doesn't drive that second planetary gear set. I'm not going to go full nerdgasm on this, just going to point out the interesting bits. We've all been through enough of these bolters to choke a whore. Some interesting inductors on the board. The board is quite well made, very uh, rigidly assembled, celastic all over monolithic in its embodiment with an integral trigger switch. That's interesting. Normally we see them wired up separate, but it's all one chunk. Nichicon uh, capacitors and either some heat sinks or some sort of big inductors here. I think these are more likely heat sinks for the MOSFETs, but someone who's more uh, interested in the topology of these can maybe elucidate and illuminate for us what exactly those are. They almost look like bolts coming out of the board, but without chewing through that epoxy celastic, we're not going to really find out. Board for the control of the LED with a nice ka chunk ka -chunk switch. The motor itself, you can see the power density of these brushless motors is just incredible. Plastic basal platen on the backside with the Hall effect sensor board in order to uh, make sure that the phase rotation is correct. Interestingly, on the backside of the bearing housing, there's a little low durometer or medium durometer teat on there in order to reduce vibrations. That's what's giving you all the power inside this rotor are some permanent magnets and drives into the input of this planetary gear set with a pinion. Interestingly, the front bearing for this rotor is in this plastic housing. This is uh, nylon, probably glass fiber, 40%, something like that, but it's in the housing. We normally see this in a, uh, a metallic housing or at the start of the gearbox, but not in this case. And then there's a stub shaft, what goes in, and it doesn't actually fit tight enough into the planet carrier in order to, uh, to hold itself nice and... Am I even in frame? Framing, you fuck! Speaking of choking a whore, we got a double ender here doing double duty is this ring gear from the planetary gear set. You can see it's got some indents and some raised sections there. That's from a drill, a hammer drill, in order to uh, put some impetus to and fro in the chuck. But it's got no purpose whatsoever on this tool. There you have it. <laughs> splayed out before you in all its absurd glory. The wire cable stripper, if in your uh, pixie wrangler yourself, you know, you like that big girthy kind of black mamba, do let me know if you use this, if it's what I think it is, kind of a fancy goo what gets used a couple times and then tossed into the back of the truck, never to be remembered again. We'll see you at the estate sale in about 40 years type deal. Or if it's any fucking good at all. I have my doubts. What we will do 
is get this up to temperature on the healing bench, get her all kind of mixed up, see if we can't get her back together. We'll build our own die, what we don't need to change. We'll use an adjustable die, just a little socket there, and maybe, uh, maybe some Kunstane Tongue Glide cutters and a little roller and this, that, the other thing. See if we can't make this even hokier. <laughs> Spanks for watching. As always, your considered discourse and, uh, well, barbs. The best thing about these videos are the comments. Hands down, no question. I mean, you can watch a, a two-hour movie for the sake of, you know, you go to the theater, you pay your 40 bucks and put your mask on and so forth, they show your papers, and go and have a couple laughs, all for two hours of your time. Or you can just scroll through the comments here and laugh your arse clean off. Thank you. So thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.